friends uh, this in this class we will discuss a specific question uh, which uh, concerns with the propagation of error when the two resistances are connected in parallel so i have two resistances uh, they are connected in parallel so this is resistance 1 which we are calling r1 and this is my resistance 2 which i am calling r2 and these two resistances are connected in parallel and both of these resistances are measured which means that there is some error in them so the first one has been measured as 100 plus minus 3 ohm so there is an error of 3 ohm there and the second one has been measured as 200 plus minus 4 ohm so there is an error here also so the thing is since these two resistances are in parallel let us just compute the value of resistance r itself so what would that be so th th that can be computed in two ways uh, one is we can use this formula 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 or if you want you can directly use this formula if you remember it you simplify this one and it becomes r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so if you compute it substitute r1 as 100 r2 as 200 this comes out to be 66.7 ohm so that is the value of r we have not really computed the delta r here which is our error so the error in the computation of r uh, in the book it gives a formula delta r by r squared is equal to delta r1 by r1 squared plus delta r2 by r2 squared now this is really the curved ball right here Uh, how does this formula come into being we don't really know so this is the purpose of the class we will understand how this formula actually happens but before we do that let us just uh, ignore this formula for one second and try to compute the value of delta r right here from this formula the r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so very simply we know that in the case of division of and, and multiplication of quantities we know that our relative error which means delta r by r will be equal to the sum of relative error in r1 plus sum of relative error in r2 plus sum of relative error in r1 plus r2 that much we can do so this will be equal to delta r1 by r1 plus that is relative error in r1 delta r2 by r2 that is relative error in r2 plus delta r1 plus r2 by R one R two, sorry, R one plus R two, right? That is the relative error in R one plus R two. So what is delta R one? We can substitute it. Delta R one is nothing but three. What is R one? That is nothing but hundred. What is delta R two? This is four from right here, and this is nothing but two hundred. What is R one plus R two? So this bottom quantity. What is this? This is hundred plus two hundred. This is three hundred. simple only and what about the error in r1 plus r2 the absolute error in r1 plus r2 we know that when quantities are added their absolute error also get added so this 3 and 4 will get added and we will have a value of 7 right here so from here and of course we know the value of r also now and this is 66.7 so from this we can calculate our delta r if you sub you have substituted all the values so from here we can calculate our delta r to be equal to 4.67 now this 4.67 is uh, is a value of delta r it's a reasonable value it's uh, something that we have computed it's not incorrect the only thing is that it's an overestimate i mean overestimation in case of errors is actually okay we should never underestimate those but why is this an overestimate this is an overestimate why is that the case look at this formula once again here if r1 increases if r1 increases this r1 plus r2 will also increase so some of the increase in r1 will be compensated by its division with r1 plus r2 similarly some of the increase in r2 will also be compensated by its division with r1 plus r2 therefore we have not really taken that compensation into account so in these cases when the quantities to be measured like r1 and and r2 are repeated again and again in the formula uh, in the computation 
we cannot directly use if we if we directly use our addition uh, division multiplication and power formulas in in such uh, such cases where the quantities are repeated here r1 is repeated r2 is also repeated it's both present in the numerator as well as in denominator so in this case if we use our normal formulas then we will always get an overestimate so to derive the correct formula we have to use the partial uh, differentiation of uh, the partial differentiation and it's we have to use that for error propagation and we have separate class on partial differentiation so definitely look at that and we have seen how to apply that in the case of error propagation so definitely look at that class also those two classes okay so look at those so we will use what we have already seen in those two classes to derive a formula for delta r in this case okay so delta r if you think about it it comes it has actually two components is the error because of r1 so we will just call it delta r because of r1 plus delta r because of r2 those are the two components so delta r really has error because of two reasons right it is because of the uh, error in r1 plus error in r2 that is those are the two reasons why because of which delta r will have an error what about the error in r1 so to compute the error in because of r1 what we do is that we differentiate this equation with respect to r1 so we will do the partial differentiation as we have seen already and using chain rule here first we differentiate with respect to r so this becomes minus 1 by r square delta r by delta r1 and this comes out to be this is equal to we differentiate this with respect to r1 so we are differentiating this entire equation with respect to r1 so this comes out to be minus 1 by r1 squared okay and this r2 because this is partial differentiation del r by del r1 so this r2 we are assuming constant for this case and because this is constant this becomes plus 0 so similarly we can also differentiate with respect to r2 and in that case we will get 1 by r squared del r by del r2 this is the differentiation of r with respect to r2 so this is the chain rule right here we have applied it and this is equal to 0 minus 1 by r2 squared okay so these are the two differentiation now what does what does uh, these differentiation tell us so we'll simplify these a little bit more okay so first let's simplify this one and we can write rate of change of r with respect to r1 is nothing but r square by r1 square and from here we can write rate of change of r with respect to r2 is also nothing but r square by r2 square very simple okay nothing complicated we have done th things very simply now so this is the rate of change of r with respect to r1 we know what is the error in r1 the error in r1 is delta r1 so what would be the delta r because of r1 it will be the rate of change of r with respect to r1 multiplied it by the error in r1 error in r1 is delta r1 okay and this is separate and what about the error in r2 error in r2 uh, sorry the error in r because of r2 will be nothing but the rate of change of r with respect to r2 which is r square by r2 squared multiply it with the change in r2 change in r2 is nothing but the error in r2 delta r2 so from this we get the two components of r so we substitute in that formula so we get delta r is equal to r square by r1 squared multiplied by delta r1 plus r squared by r2 squared 
multiplied it by delta r2 and this is the formula given in your book so we have arrived at the same formula using method of partial differentiation very very simple method okay and this is a very powerful technique because we can just use it anywhere so if you substitute all the values we know r we know r1 we know delta r1 again we substitute all the values so if you substitute all the values this comes out to be 1.80 previously we have just improved on that estimate of error now we are down to an error of 1.8 ohm and uh, previously our error was actually equal to 4.67 ohm so that was uh, much much larger than the error that we have now so of course our error we always expresses express it in one significant digit so this comes out to be 2 ohm and our final answer would come out to be 66 so the 66 we will just 66.7 will round to the same decimal digit as our error so this 67 plus minus 2 ohm okay that should be your final answer okay so again very very simple if you use the correct method so you know, this is the uh, demystification of that uh, formula for you okay thank you